guys. Um, hope you guys had a good weekend. Hope everybody stay is staying busy and not going out of their mind. Um, here I am downstairs in um, my kids' playroom. I'll show you guys around a little bit. Um, there's our little basketball hoop. Um, the kids actually cleaned this tonight because I asked them to, because I told them that I was going to be doing a read aloud downstairs and I promise that I will include my kids in the videos. They just had to go to bed um, so I couldn't get them in there today but um, or tonight. But anyway, I'm going to read the next chapter of Wish um, and remember that if this is not your thing, if you don't really, not really dig in this book, you don't have to watch these read alouds. Um, I hope that you decide to, um, but it's not something that is, you know, it's something that's optional. So um, just that you should know. So the next chapter is chapter 24. The week after Jackie left, I started vacation Bible school at Rocky Creek Baptist Church. I told Bertha I didn't want to go, but she kept telling me how much I was going to love it. I went to vacation Bible school every summer when I was a girl, she said. I loved everything about it. The games, the crafts, the songs. She went on to tell me about making a bird feeder by putting peanut butter on a pine cone and rolling it in bird seed. And lanyards? I must have made about a hundred lanyards. She laughed and shook her head. And macrame keychains. I loved those. And, she said, Howard and all the kids from Sunday school will be there. So I finally said, okay. But then the day before I was supposed to go, Bertha came home with a lunchbox covered with ponies and rainbows. I can't believe I let you take your lunch to school in an ugly old paper bag, she said. I can't take that, I said. Bertha's smile faded. Oh, she said, okay. I could tell I'd hurt her feelings, but there was no way I could take that lunchbox. Bertha snatched it off the kitchen counter and stuck it way up in the top shelf of the cupboard. I don't know what I was thinking, she said. That thing is just plumb silly. So she put my lunch in a brown paper bag and off to vac off I went to vacation Bible school. We sat in a circle in the shade and listened to Miss Rhonda tell us how much fun we were going to have. Even though we knew each other from Sunday school, she said, first, I'd like for each of y'all to tell us your name and then three fun facts about yourself. Right away, I thought about my first day of school in Colby and that getting to know you paper. But this time, when it was my turn, instead of saying I liked soccer, ballet, and fighting, I said, I have a dog named Wishbone. My sister works at the Waffle House. My Aunt Bertha has seven cats. We spent the morning making paper mache bowls and singing a song about Moses in the bulrushes. When it was time for lunch, I got my brown paper bag and sat next to Audrey Mitchell. I'd made up my mind that I was going to be more like Jackie from now on, Curl, cool and confident, making friends left and right. But before I could think about something to say to Audrey, Howard plopped down right next to me. Burl wrote Jackie a letter, he said. What for? He shrugged. Lenny snatched it right out of his hand and they got in a fight. Burl chased him around the house, cussing and broke a lamp. He lifted the corner of his sandwich and examined the bologna and mustard inside. Did Burl get the letter back? I asked. Howard flattened his sandwich between the palms of his hands. Yeah, he said, but it got ripped. And now they're both grounded because of the cussing and the lamp. He pushed at his damp red hair. His arms were sunburned, bright pink, and dotted with freckles. He went on to tell me about Dwight breaking his pinky finger at baseball camp. While Howard talked, I watched Audrey out of the corner of my eye. She sat cross-legged with a paper napkin on her lap. She had butterfly barrettes in her hair, and her sneakers didn't have one speck of dirt on them. Her lunchbox was plain, no ponies or rainbows on it. She opened it and peered inside. Then she took out a plastic bag full of grapes, something wrapped in foil, and a folded up piece of paper. I scooted a little closer to her and pretended like I was listening to Howard while she opened the paper. It was a note with a big swirly handwriting on it. When she put it down on the grass next to her grapes, I squinted at it, trying to read it. And Cotton has two ticks on him, Howard was saying, so Mama had made him strip down naked right there in the yard. A couple of kids giggled and I shot Howard a look. Nobody wanted to hear the word naked while they ate their lunch. But Howard went right on talking like he didn't even notice. Just then, some girl I didn't know said, sit here, Audrey and patted the ground next to her. So Audrey scooped up her grapes and, st and stuff and moved away from me and Howard, leaving, this, leaving the piece of paper behind. Right away, I slapped my foot down on top of it. While Audrey and that girl chatted away about swimming lessons and soccer camp, I snatched up the paper and stuffed it in my pocket. What was that? Howard asked. What was what? That paper. What paper? That paper in your pocket. Nothing. Howard wiped at a dab of mustard on his shorts. Okay, he said. All afternoon, while we read Bible stories out loud and watched Miss Rhonda's teenage son do magic tricks, I thought about that note in my pocket. 
Every once in a while, I reached in and wrapped my fingers around it. Finally, I got my chance. Howard was helping Miss Rhonda take the Bible storybooks back inside the church, and Audrey was busy being friends with everyone but me. So I took that paper out of my pocket, and I read it. Have fun at Vacation Bible School. I'll be missing you. I love you very much, Mama. Quickly, I folded it and jammed it back into my pocket. I looked over at Audrey, linking arms with some girl and whispering. I closed my eyes, and in my mind, I became Audrey, a girl with perfect sneakers and a friend to whisper secrets to and a mama who wrote, I love you very much, on a note for me. But then I opened my eyes, and I was me again. That night, we had corn on the cob for supper. I counted the rows of corn on my cob and couldn't believe it. Exactly 14. That was on my list of things you could wish on. I counted one more time to make sure, and then I closed my eyes and I made my wish. Oh, I almost forgot, Bertha said. Jumping up from the table, she took something off the counter and handed it to me. A lunchbox. A plain lunchbox with no ponies or rainbows. She lifted her eyebrows and said, What do you think? Better? A wave of guilt swept over me and caught me by surprise. I felt bad that Bertha had spent money to buy another lunchbox for me. I should have just taken the one with rainbows and ponies and been thankful for it. I bet Jackie would have, but I hadn't, and now there was Bertha being so nice to me. Yes, ma'am, I said thank you. When we went out on the porch and tossed a tennis ball to Wishbone till he got tired and went to sleep at my feet, as I watched the sun sink slowly behind the mountains, I cupped my hand around that note in my pocket. I thought about Audrey's mother putting those grapes in that little bag and writing that note. I wonder what Audrey's family was like, the one she had written on her flower for the Garden of Blessings at church. I knew for sure her daddy wasn't away somewhere getting corrected, and I bet she had a sister who played cards with her on rainy days and whispered secrets under the covers at night, and I was certain her mama had her feet on the ground. When it got dark and the mosquitoes came out, me and Wishbone went back to my room. I fished around in my backpack until I found a piece of paper and a pen. I tore the paper in half and sat on the floor and wrote, I love you very much, Mama. Then I folded the paper up and tucked it under my pillow before turning on the light and kissing Wishbone on the top of his head. Right, so that's a really good chapter. So tomorrow I will be recording another chapter and sending that along. So I hope you're enjoying the book and we are getting towards the end. There are... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, roughly five more chapters. So I would say by the end of this week, we should finish this book and then we'll be ready for our next book, which is a bit of a fantasy book to kind of fit our theme of um, the literature book groups that we never really got to start or we just kind of started it when everything happened. So anyway, I hope everybody is enjoying themselves as much as possible. Um, I know it's tough. I hope you're getting enough exercise. I hope you're going outside. I hope you're help helping your families at the house. Um, I know my kids have really stepped up to the plate. They're cleaning, organizing, um, you know, doing their part around the house. And I think that's important for you guys to help your parents out because they have the hardest job in the world. Um, so anyway, guys, miss you so much. And I would much rather be with you um, during this time than stuck in the house. But we make the most of it, so um, I will record some more, and um, hope you're enjoying it. Okay, good night.